Egypt's people have been protesting on the streets. The country's president has been ousted and interim leaders are steering the country towards elections. It's a coup d'etat déjà vu in Cairo after the military took charge in the country for the second time in the last couple of years. Professor of International Relations Robert Patman is here to help untangle the web of events in the northeast corner of Africa. Good evening, Robert. Good evening, Rebecca. Events have been unfolding quite quickly. Where do we stand this evening? Uh, it's, even, it's balanced very evenly at the moment because we've had violence in Egypt in the last seven days uh, since the military seized power. Fifty supporters of uh, the deposed president, uh, President Morsi, from the Muslim Brotherhood organisation have been killed in, an exchange, in a confrontation with the military, both sides blaming each other. And uh, there was an initiative in the last 24 hours by the military to accelerate the process of political transition. Mm. Uh, so there are <laughs> signs of uh, alarm and signs of hope, I suppose. Now, there were celebrations in Cairo when Mubarak was ousted in 2011. Mm. What went wrong after that? Uh, I think basically um, when President Morsi was democratically elected in a, what was widely regarded as a fair and free election, um, basically Morsi proceeded to lose a lot of the support that he had gained that enabled him to win the election. Uh, and the major problems were uh, the economy, uh, rising unemployment, uh, sluggish growth. And remember, this is a country of 80 million people. And the, I think uh, there was also, in addition to disappointing economic performance, there was also disappointment with the, well, there was a perception amongst many people who supported Morsi, who were moderate, that he was slowly Islamicizing the mm. country. Um, he accrued a lot of power in his hands, and many people didn't like the way he was um, increasingly I injecting an Islamist dimension to the Constitution. And I think this resulted in massive protests that we saw uh, in, in about two weeks ago, culminating in the military takeover. Now, why did the military step in and oust him? Well, that's a very good question. Um, they claimed uh, that they had to intervene because the government was not responding to popular demands. Um, of course, uh, some people argue that the military um, always saw itself as a power broker mm. and uh, therefore saw itself in a position... Uh, to oust the Islamist government. It is a very dangerous situation, however. Egypt is a crucial player in the Middle East, and it's very interesting to gauge the reaction of other international players, countries such as the United States, which is closely aligned with the Egyptian mm. uh, military and government, um, have been very cautious in their response to what's happening. And Prime Minister John Key has warned against travel to Egypt unless it's urgent. Does that still stand? I think that's a sensible piece of caution. We don't know how the situation is going to pan out. Mm. And uh, it is a very uncertain situation. It has the potential for considerable violence. Now, an election timetable has already mm. been produced. Do you think the latest upheaval can be resolved peacefully? Very difficult to say. Uh, the, the one thing that's really worrying me is that the military um, seem to be alienating both the, Islam, the, the Islamist forces, but it's the Muslim Brotherhood, which of course they've got, and they've got their leaders under house arrest, so you expect them to be upset. And also they're rejected from government after being elected. But also, interestingly, the liberal opposition, who they responded to, uh, seem to be getting alienated as well, not least by the military's insistence to dictate the pace of the political transition. I think many people who supported the military in deposing the, the, the um, Muslim Brotherhood government did so on the basis they thought they then would have a much greater say in framing the political transition and therefore they may be dismayed by the fact the military seems to be unwilling to relinquish mm. uh, the framing of the change. So it, it's, it's a very delicate situation and of course some people worry about the Algerian scenario in 1991 when the military intervened there, deposed uh, an Islamist government and that culminated in civil war. Is it common for a military to be able to step in and, and go above the government? Well, we have to take into account that uh, Egypt has, had not, has, has not had a democratic tradition mm. and that the military has been one of the strongest institutions and for 30 years President Mubarak ruled through the military and so did his predecessor Anwar Sadat. Mm. So the military has been one of the most solid institutions uh, in that country and it's difficult to get instant democracy after... Uh, uh, you, it's one thing to introduce elections, but it's quite another thing to get an established democracy, the sort of democracy we understand in New Zealand. Professor of International Relations, Robert Patman, thank, thank you for you. your time.